Hello there. Um, back again for another uh, short video. Well, say short. It's not really short. It's it's what I've done previously before me missus was um, gone ill, like you know, and I've had all the clips on the computer like already done. Just needs joining together. I, I think I might have one more on there, but I am I haven't been out here in the shed doing any um, restorations because I've been so busy looking after her. It's been nightmares here. I tell you doing everything good i got to do everything for her like so um i mean in a minute when when i've done this this video here i mean if this one i put together on the computer i can do it indoors but you know i mean the next if there is another one in there i'm going to check in a minute there might be possibly another one there i've got to put all the clips together what i've just got all the bits in a folder if you know what i mean ready to be um sort of edited into the actual video and um you know, if, if that's the case, I can get another one on, sort of, you know, within the next couple of weeks. But, you know, you're going to have to excuse me for now, like, because I've had a few emails, like, from people, and they're, you know, like, oh, when's the next video, and all this sort of thing, and, you know, you're going to have to just bear with me, like, until, until the missus is um, right, I'm not I'm not going to sort of bother so much about it, I'm trying to, trying to do bits here and there, and I can, I'm going to try and get out in the shed and do a bit more. So I can um, put a few few more um, new ones on for you guys. But anyway, thank, thanks again. You know, everybody left all the kind messages for me and my missus and all that. A few mentions here. I'll give a, this is only be a quick um, quick yap today. Um, <clears throat> Chris Smith, Gary Rourke, George Younger, Ian H and Ian B, uh, Charles Vanderbur, Derek Rowe, Robert Grimstead. That's that's a few. You know people that's a nice comment there's loads more like i say i can't tell her can't say everybody's name because i want to make this quick today really um if you if you i was going to say if you remember back along i've done um oh what was it i've, I've done a triumph a triumph for test and a and a spitfire well in the comments when i've done them two i've done a double up on that i had a few people saying oh what about the triumph 2000 well i didn't have one at the time but I would have done it if I had one. Well, lucky enough, I've got one. And this is what this video is. And the guy who sent it to me is, of course, <laughs> he must be well known everywhere by now, with with all the models he must have sent to people, is Mr. Ian Hulley again. <laughs> he sent me loads of stuff. He's he sent stuff to everybody. And he's he's a brilliant bloke. And um he he saw the comment, you know left to me saying like you know if I could do one can I do one of these um, Triumph 2000s and he, he had one and he sent it to me he even included a new set of tyres on that and everything but it went in bad neck anyway you'll see that in the video in a minute but anyway there's a few um, comments here from people David Hyde I've got here hi Bob you have made me feel guilty He's David Hyde's got a YouTube channel I've watched many of your great videos and have never commented I will in future, I promise. <laughs> That's all right, David. Don't you don't have to comment. It's not compulsory. Um, anyway, thanks for that. Oh yeah, I left a comment about because he's um, he's got this um, electronic paint stripper thing or something. You got to put these this certain solution in it, and apparently it's um, been discontinued, so you can't use it anymore or something. And he's he's looking for other ways to strip the cars. And I just left a comment saying, "Oh, use a bloody um, caustic soda," you know cheap in it he said thanks for that i know you use caustic soda but it looks like fire and brimstone <laughs> it scares me a little anyway i'm tired of keep dropping and changing i will buy some online and man up looks like the way to go thanks for the tip stay safe david well it's the best way to go dave i'll tell you you know i mean that's the stuff to use it's like i say it is cheap you know you don't worry about it so much. You just sprinkle it in. Like you got to, like I say, you got to be careful with it. You're supposed to wear gloves and goggles, and mask and all that stuff. Really, I, I know I don't, but you know, but you should do. It's because it can burn your skin really bad. Don't get it on your hands or anything or in your eyes. Really bad stuff. <clears throat> you got to be extra careful with it. But it does the job. That's the main thing. Anyway. Somebody else, um, new, I've never seen this name before, Jeff Hydo 5 Car looks awesome. Hope everything here goes smooth. Thanks, Jeff. Stephanie Hamilton. Oh, she saw me on the last video when I was 
I was squirting some some of the old um, stuff on the um, bumper with me. Um, it was it was a, a a glue a wood glue bottle I had, and I cleaned it all out and I put the old baking powder in that so I could like squirt it on like like that on there instead of keep sprinkling it on with a little bloody shovel thing. And she said, buy one of those soft plastic toy baby bottles. I've never seen them. From the pound shop to squirt out your baking soda works a charm. I've never seen them, Steph. But I will have a look when I go in there next time. Thanks for that. Bill Bailey. Great job, Bob. You need not worry about the videos. Keep yourself and the wife healthy. All the best, Bill Bailey. P.S. My next one will be Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. He's going to because he had to go to Batmobile back along. He's asking me about that. and He's going to have to go at the old Chitty Bang Bang. Good luck, mate. <laughs> It's a horrible one to do. <laughs> Robert Garrett. Um, what can I say, Bob? The resto is fantastic. The front bumper was, well, I will say it again. What can one say? <laughs> you mentioned about the possibility of selling the model. I wouldn't. I'd keep it on display. I'm glad to, to hear your partner's okay. Wish her well when she has the op. Yeah, I'm open that they do, do the op. Because with all this business going on at the moment, it's a bit bloody, you know, stupid at the moment. I went down the shops, down the supermarket this morning early. I don't know, it must have been 7 o'clock, half past 7. And it was queued right around the block for people waiting to get in. They was only letting in a few at a time. I couldn't get in to get anything. I, I just went to a smaller shop. That's all I could do. Just go around different little small shops and pick up what you can, you know. I mean, I couldn't get into the supermarket. And, I'm, and I've got her in here. Like, needs, needs stuff, like, you know, to keep her going and all that toilet paper and things couldn't get nothing i know they've got to keep people apart and all that but i mean it's, it's gone right out of hand now i'll be glad when it's all finished with it's getting stupid i think the only way to go is do it online i think that you know have it delivered and sort of pay, pay an extra five or something to have it delivered it saves all the hassle going down there the only anybody who can do it online i think that's about the best way to go anyway that's enough about that i'm not here to talk about bloody coca-cola virus Gaza P, great job, Bob. What, what was the seller smoking? Asking fifteen pound for that. I bought one at the NEC Toy Fair for five euro without the damage. Yeah, that one. That one I got that in the old video just now, the last video. Yeah, he wanted fifteen quid for it to start with. Half the bumper is missing. I thought, Pfft. having a laugh, mate. Anyway, yeah, I got it cheap in the end, didn't I? So. Darkhouse Garage, and I really enjoy your channel. It's honest and real. You are a relative. I can't even read. I don't know about honest. I, I try to be honest, yeah. But re relatable and genuinely entertaining. Entertaining. I can't even say things now. I don't know what's entertainment, entertaining about me. Um, anyway, Darkhouse Garage, thanks. Um, yeah, do what you. Oh, what what am I doing? Do what you have to do for your family. We will keep watching and send him best wishes. Wishes. Great work on the repair. It's always pop. I can't I can't read and say anything at the moment. I don't know what I'm what what am I doing? Anyway, let's get on. I'll try another one. This is the last one. RDK. This is Randy from America. Good to see you back, Bob. Stay safe and well wishes to you and your partner. Your restoration methods show you don't need fancy 3D printers or even an airbrush to do quality work. And I always learn something new or pick up a good tip. Cheers, Randy. Well, that's nice to hear, Randy. I'm glad you do. But, yeah, some people got all this. I won't say no names, but you don't under. Begins with them. Do's matchbox cars, I think. He's got a 3D printer. I can't afford things like that. A lot of us can't. But you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Anyway, I'm not going to go spuddling. <laughs> That's about it for today. So um, let's get on and do this. Um, I'll show you this video. I've put it all together. We'll get on and um, show this one. And it's the, um, like I said, it's the Triumph 2000. And um, I've actually change the colour on it as well so thanks Ian for sending this one in it's made me very happy to be able to do this one until the next time bye bye from me okay um, I know a few of you asked for this one 
This is the uh, Dinky 135 um, Triumph 2000. And um, this one here was sent again by Mr. Ian Hulley. Quite a while back though, he sent this one. And I just about got round to doing it now. I thought I'll do this one because I ain't got to buy any parts for this one. The, the glass is all good. It's got new tyres on it. And all really, all it needs is a good, you know, clean up really, and respray and sort it out. So, um, anyway, let's, um, let's get on and do this one. Okay, people. This is what we're going to do today. The old Triumph 2000. And um, it's not in bad condition actually. The glass is all good luck. Everything's there. All the bits is there. So there's no. Um, don't need to get any parts. There's new tyres on it by the looks of it. There's only one rivet to hold this one in. It clips in in the back as you can see. That bit there. The tab. So, um, well, what I'm going to do. I'm not doing it this colour again. What I'm going to do is do a, a switcheroony on this one. And I'm going to have that colour as the body, and that colour is the roof. So I'm going to have a nice blue, the blue version with the white roof, not the version that is now, the white version with the blue roof. So I'll get this drilled out and we'll um, go from there. Okay. So I've had this under the drill press. I've drilled the pole, let's um, get it open. As you see, it comes out quite, quite easy, that piece. It's quite an easy piece to deal with. I'm not going to bother taking these um, axles off. I shall um, mask up this when I respray this piece because it looks there it's going to be pretty difficult to get them out because they go through I don't want to go grinding all this stuff off just just for that I'll just take the tyres off give these a polish up while it's on the actual thing and I'll mask up all the wheels and spray it over like that so that would be pretty easy to do get it all muck out of here the bonnet it should just pop out yeah, he just comes out like that, like that, see? Just push it through. There's two little grooves in there, as, as you can see. Yep, oh, the boots come up already. You put it in at an angle like that, and you, then you sort of twist it into the grooves. And that's how you get it in there. But to get it out, little angle like that, and it comes out. Boots already dropped out, as you can see. The glass will die in. If you take the old um, seating piece out, that's a pretty good neck. Look, look how clean that is. It's very clean. It looks brand new. That doesn't need cleaning even. That's perfect. And the glass, as you can see, that's a piece that holds the boot in. So when you put your boot back, you just etch it over there like that. And then once you've got your base plate on, it puts pressure on the on the boot, and that's what holds it on there. See. So that's pretty straightforward to do. So we want to be careful of this glass now because it looks in very good condition. As you see, it only needs a bit of a polish up that and a treatment in the in the pledge, and that'll be like a brand new piece of glass. Very nice piece of glass that. So we're right with that. So we can put that aside for now. And the only part now, I've just got to drill a hole through there. I'm debating whether to um actually put a screw in it but then again it never looks so realistic with a screw so more than likely I shall um, do it with the um, you know the rivet so I'll get that piece drilled out we'll get this stripped and then we'll um, get it repainted and put back together because this looks a fairly simple one to do I know a few of you saw the the dinky double restoration of the um, Spitfire and the um, the Tess, what I did, 
and there's some a couple of people asked why am I done done the actual Triumph 2000? Well, I didn't have one at the time, but I could have done a triple restoration house. But I've had this one sent to me, and um, now I can do this one to complete the set. So anyway, there's our bits. We'll get this um get this on the road. Okay, cow's board. So let's get on and put some of this water in here. Right, let's put the old caustic soda in there and see what happens. See if there's any fireworks. I think that'll be enough. Let that bubble up. We should be seeing some paint coming off in a minute, folks. Nothing at the moment, but believe me, it will. I'll put a little bit more in. Anyway, we'll let that go. And um, <clears throat> when I bring it back, I'd have um, cleaned all the um, muck off of it. And it will all be wire brushed. So um, we'll let that go for a minute, and we'll bring that back in a minute, in a sec. Well, folks, there it is, all cleaned up. Took a bit of getting off some of that paint. It was um, quite ground in there. It's quite solid paint, but anyway, it gave way in the end. There's the can I'm going to use. It's Ford Maritime Blue. So that's the old body colour, and I'm going to do the roof the white. But first of all, I'm going to give it a quick undercoat, off camera, a bit of primer, and then we'll get on with spraying it up. Okay, right, let's get some blue on. Bad. So that's the colour I need. Yep, that's the boot done. Right, now the bonnet. It's alright. Now, for the body show, of which I'm going to have to mask up as soon as I, um, you know, as soon as it's hardened up, the paint, it's going to have to be masked up so I can put the white roof on. But we'll get this nice blue done. I'll give, the, I'll give the roof a coat as well, it ain't gonna happen. I'd like there's um, a bit of an undercoat as well. So it ain't gonna make no difference. Yeah, it's pretty good. But at least it's come out the blue that I want it to come out anyway. Yeah, quite happy with that. So anyway, we'll let this dry. And then the next bit, I'm going to have to mask it up and sort the white roof out and we'll see how we get on with that. Right, there we go. It's um, really masked up, this one. I put bits through the window, uh, you know, through where the pillars are 
because I don't want the bottom bit to be white. I just want the pillars to go down to there to be white. Uh, mass it up as best I can. I've done the inside. I don't want no paint coming through there. So um, let's give this a spray up. I'm going to give it a quick flash and then I'll bring it right back to you. Okay, right, we've put the um, white on. So now I've got to try and remember <laughs> what order I put all these bits of paper on because it obviously it'd be a lot easier taking them off <laughs> in reverse order. So I think I'll start with this piece on the back. I think that was uh, the last bit that I put on. Where's my other pliers? Or pliers? My other tweezers, my little pointy ones. Well, I can get a bit under there. Hopefully, this thing will work out okay. Here we'll try and get all these bits off in the correct order, so you know, it's going to be a lot easier if you can do that. I think there's another bit up here I stuck on. Yeah, that was still the throw these um, other pieces down they want nothing to blow up while I was spraying anything there's a piece there I think this was the next bit no I wouldn't no, I think the ah yeah these pieces here they were the next pieces, the side bits. That piece has come undone already, so I'll take these side pieces off. Looks a bit of a mess at the moment, folks, but I assure you, I did really mass this up pretty good. So I shouldn't have any, shouldn't have anything coming over on this. Once I get these side pieces off, I can. Get the inside bits out. There's another bit there, like under there, see. There's the other side bit. Get that off. I don't get me dirty fingers on it. There's the front piece. It can come off. There's another piece there. So far looking pretty good. Everything's coming off as it should do. Alright, let's take these pieces off the inside now. That's where I didn't want to come in and it hasn't. This is always the worry when you when you're um <laughs> unpeeling these Every time you've done a two time when you when you gotta take it all off. This is always the worrying bit. And with a bit of luck it's gonna come out pretty good. I really, I really did take my time masking this. I didn't wanna miss any little bit longer you take doing it the better it will come out just you know take out a little, a extra little bit of time masking it and you should get a good result right that's that piece out of the way but I'm going to get rid of all these little bits a minute before I go any further because I'm getting pretty pulled up here i will dump this lot give it out of the way And then we'll um, see what the rest is like. Right. In my pointy ones. And then the other ones, because the pointy ones don't squeeze properly so that's why I've got to use these 
Ah, oh, it's that piece. That's going to come off first. The long bits. Because they're overlapping that, that was, as you can see. Please be okay. <laughs> Please be okay. Right, let's see, it's steady as she goes. This is a delicate part. Steady does it. Easy does it. That's that piece out. That's another little piece I put on to get the curves. Alright so far guys. Looking good at the moment. Got my little white bit around the front, like I said. See what the back pieces come out like. If it's looking as good as the front, then I'll be happy. And I just gotta put all these little pieces here right then. got a box made up for this one so I'm gonna show you it in the box at the end of the video that can come off of there it's nearly there folks but hopefully if this is all okay I can give it a, a nice good lacquering Oh, what's that mark there? Don't say that it's gone over. I bloody hope not. How the hell did that get missed? Perhaps I might be able to get that off with a bit of tarps, I don't know. Oh well, this is where it goes wrong. <laughs> About things it's slightly soft still that paint so the actual lacquer will cover that up you see I wonder if that'll come off I don't know I don't know how that did do that no it is actually took the blue off as well that I took the blue off with that, so I'm going to have to touch that in. Ah, oh, see, there's always something that goes wrong, but there you go. Can't win them all. Everything was going so well. Oh well, let's take the rest of it off. God knows how that piece got sprayed there I really did mass this pretty well so I don't know how a little gap appeared there I really don't push them out through there get these pieces off Anyway, I'm going to do this off camera because it's uncomfortable like this, and I'm going to try and cover that in. Try and um, get rid of that little mark there. So I'll be right back. As you can see, I've um, got it all um, lacquered now, and uh, it ain't turned out too bad. I've got it where I wanted it. I wanted the um, tops of the doors showing there and just coming down on the struts with a thin bit either side and yeah that's come out pretty good so all we've got to do now is put this together oh, there's a bit of a bit of a mark there where I did try to cover up that mark well, so, well, 
that little mishap we had. But anyway, everybody gets problems when you do, you know. When you when you're doing these things, there's always something crops up and goes wrong at some point. <laughs> Nothing's perfect, as they say. But it's hundred percent better than it was. I'm quite happy with how it's come out. I'm not going to mess around with it anymore. I've had enough messing around with this one. So um, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this together. I'm not going to bother showing you how to do that. You did see it. You saw me take it apart, so you know where it goes back together. And um, I'm going to get the old engine detailed up, get the lights and all that sorted out, and then we'll um, we'll have a look at it on the old turntable. Um, and plus, like I said, I'm doing a box for this one as well, so I'm going to get on with that in a minute. So until then... Okay then, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to um, print a box for this um, Triumph 2000. So if I go to my uh, folder here, down to pictures, Corgi. Now, if I look through this folder, I should have a box. Ah, there it is. Double click on that. And that, that should open up in my photo suite, there it is. So, um, <coughs> pardon me. So we'll let this open up. Now what we've got to do now, is I want to print that as it is. Because if you look at some of these boxes that come on these discs, you've got to trial and error on bits of paper first, because it, they don't always print the right size. So what you've got to do is do a bit of trial and error with them, to you think you've got the right size with this one here actually I print it on actual size setting which I'll show you now so if I go to print up there a box will open up in a minute here it is now up here that if you if you if you see up, up where, I'm, where I am now change settings click that then you've got Auto uh, cassette selection and cassette one, two, whatever all that is, I don't know because I never use it. Uh, rear paper feed slot. So on my printer, I've got like an underneath one that you can keep paper in and it comes up and goes around. Or I can feed it from the back. Like if I've got card, I can feed it one sheet at a time in the back. So we want that one. And what I usually do, I put it on not plain papers, I change it to to um, photo quality inkjet because if you've got a nice smooth paper or card you get a better quality print from that so I'll put it on the photo setting right we've done that and then you go down to this bit on size and put it on actual size so now that there should be the right size you can move it a bit closer to the edge of the paper if you want like that and then you can save all this the scrap paper for um, writing on doing whatever like you know so anyway we'll print that just click print like that oh this oh it's because I've got already purchased I've got a continuous ink system in this so I'll just press continue on that piece of card here get a piece of card and it's asking me in my printer to put the paper in like that so we'll put the paper in push it down till it stops when you feel it won't go any further and then I've got to um, press the start and as you see it starts putting it in Because on this one I've got the um, continuous ink set up, see? So I never run out of ink. <laughs> it's never everlasting ink on this one, I'm afraid. I run out of paper quicker than what I do ink. So we'll see how this comes out now. Need a bit 
need a bit of light here, I think. I'll open the curtain up slightly so we can see what the print comes out like. Shouldn't take too long. It's a pretty quick this printer. Let's see if you look inside of here. I don't know if I can show you. But I've got like a continuous supply of ink going to the, each cartridge. So this one will never run out. All I've got to do is keep the um, reservoirs full, which I've got over there. With my bottled ink, which I've got up there. Not very bright. But anyway, here it comes. It should be almost so nice. It's taken longer because I put it on the inkjet, like for the photo paper setting, which takes a bit longer to print because it uses a slightly bit more ink. Because if I'd have just left it on normal paper, it would have whizzed through pretty quick. And there you go. There's the box. And what I usually do now is I print the back of this card a grey so it looks realistic with the original box and then I put it together then. But there you go. That's how you do it. Yeah.